What I've got here is a 14 foot John Boat to Bass Boat build that I did for a customer. This boat is a textbook example of how I do my full onboard electronics in a John Boat build. So I'm gonna give you guys a full walkthrough of everything that I crammed in this boat from front to back. Hopefully it'll help you out and give you some useful information and some ideas for your personal project. So stick around and I'll share with you how I did it. All right, here she is, gentlemen, 1436. And we're gonna take a look at the electronics today and this bad boy. I'm gonna walk you through everything and show it to you. And then after I do the walkthrough, I'll show you a lot of the miscellaneous connections and solder connectors and stuff that I use to actually piece this thing together and make the magic happen. Um, and then at the end of the video, uh, later when it gets dark, you know, show you what it looks like at night. So that'll, that'll be towards the end of the video. But let's go ahead and start walking through and I'll show you what all I put in this boat. We'll start up front with the obvious um, Graf Lawrence, I believe this is a hook too. Uh, the customer dropped this off to be used in the build. He had acquired it and wanted to use it with the build. So he already had this. It's a solid unit. It's got lake maps and all that good stuff. Um, we've got, it comes with a triple shot and a double shot transducer. Got the uh, double shot on the Minn Kota transducer mount on the front end of this thing. And um, that's what he's been using. So as far as trolling motor, Again, he dropped this unit off. Uh, it was a used unit, and he dropped it off with the boat to be used in this build. So it's a Minn Kota. It's a 70, and it's a 24-volt. And the thing that we did that's it's, it's a little bit different is the batteries are not up front. This, this boat has all the batteries in the back, so obviously I had to wire it that way. And I'll show you how I did that in a second. But um, solid setup here, you know, with the trolling motor and the graph, and then obviously seat pedestal and then how his pedal placement is just to kind of sit up here and fish man for a 14 footer real solid setup the wiring for the trolling motor is under the deck it feeds from the pedal goes through the tray and then it's back up under there if you could see that and what i did is i installed one of these connectors it's kind of like an anderson got it on amazon and um that's just a quick connect and uh pretty cool just hides up under there it's got a lot of space way up under there you can't really see it but uh that wiring feeds through goes under the framing into the back of the boat and i'll show you how it connects to the batteries when i make my way back there as far as lighting goes inside of these hatches i've got one you can see it a blue led in that hatch and then one led in that hatch just hidden under the track got the same deal and these hatches, as you can see, LED under the track, LED under the track. I've got one more in that back hatch. I'll show you that one when I get there. All of the LEDs in all the hatches are wired to one switch. This one and this one feed together. This one and this one they feed together and loop around and then those two loop around and then they all connect and then the one in the back I believe just runs solo but they're all wired to one switch. Now inside of this hatch here is also your nav light for up front and your stern light on some clips and I'll show those to you at night and then back up under there you'll see some wiring feed in that is a fuse box and a negative bus combo on the right. And then this over here on the left is actually a USB port. So if he's got anything he wants to charge out of the weather and the sun, he can do that in there. And then he's got easy access to his fuse box. Everything's labeled. And if he needs to change a fuse, if he pops one, Easy to get in there and do it and identify what is what. Now you'll see in there that all my connection points are heat shrink wrap when I use a ring terminal. And then I'm using anchor marine wire. I'm using eight gauge to get me from the battery 
to the actual terminal and then from there everything that feeds out back to the switch or any of the negatives coming in that's going to be 14 gauge anchor marine wire that i get from tinyboatnation.net and then uh you'll see a variety of colors of fuses some sometimes you need a two or a three or a five or even a 10 or 20 it just depends on what the specs are on the accessory and we're moving on to the switch panel this is kind of my pride and joy of this project I spent a lot of time fabricating all of that it's all custom you'll notice above the switch panel it's an led light also got another one on this side those run on their own switch just for the cockpit area but basically this switch panel is an aluminum panel that's been wrapped in carbon fiber vinyl by 3m and then this is a secondary panel that i cut out of aluminum to house this eight gang switch panel and then this combo it's got a 12 volt it's got your voltmeter it's got another usb port and then over here we've got your variable live well timer and then this is actually a battery kill switch but this is a battery kill switch for the battery that provides power to all of the onboard electronics. And again, when I get to the back of the boat, I'll show you the battery setup. You'll see that all of these switches are individually lab labeled. He's got some spares. Um, most of these are different lights, nav lights, stern light, cockpit lights, all the lights for the hatches. Um, the one with the beer is actually the bilge because if you're pumping water out of your boat, you probably need to sit down and drink a beer at that point. Um, live well, live well fill. And um, this one here controls the actual live well pump, and I'll show you that in a second. And then of course, this switch controls everything here um, as far as the USB, the voltmeter. But what I also did was wire this panel and this switch to the voltmeter inside of here. So basically, if he needs to charge something out here or in there, it's all wired to this switch. And as far as that live well timer, it is actually controlling this pump down in there. That is an Atwood Tsunami 500 gallon per hour pump. And this is the live well setup. Something different on this one, guys, a little different flavor. So that timer controls that pump and then the other button controls the pump in the back. So let's take a look at that. On the tail end, a lot going on in here, guys. Of course, you've got the light. So that's the last LED light. Bunch of juice, what can I say? And for this thing being a 1436, this is about as much stuff as I could cram in here. So let me walk you through kind of what's in here and how I did it. So again, on the front end, we've got that Minn Kota that's a 24 volt trolling motor. So two of these batteries are for the trolling motor. The third battery is actually for all the onboard electronics. The outside two are hooked up to run that 24 volt. And those are group 31 batteries. The one in the middle, that's a group 27 and uh, that's just for all the onboard electronics dedicated battery get all my batteries from j and j battery in statum georgia so if you're near that area or in the state of georgia passing through man they got great prices solid batteries all of our electric only guys that i know get batteries from there and uh, have good luck with them so that's kind of what we've got going on the battery setup what you can't see is i've got three battery trays underneath the batteries elevating them back in there back to the trolling motor you can't see it that is a circuit breaker for the trolling motor your positive lead comes into it and then shoots around goes to this battery we've got this negative jumped over to that positive and then the negative feed from the trolling motor up front comes in and ties in there got a noco genius onboard charger connected to all three of the batteries so all he's got to do is pop the hatch plug in it could charge all three batteries overnight. This boat's a pond hopper, guys, in case you were wondering. He's up in Tennessee, and he's just going to be hitting some small lakes and ponds with it, and he's not going to run an outboard. So it's an electric-only setup, which is why we did the batteries in the back taking up the full space. Moving on, 
There is your Vivewell fill Outwood Tsunami. It's an 800 gallon per hour, and all that does is pump water in, and it's wired to its very own switch over here, and then it just pumps water out of that fill nozzle for the live well. So that's wired in. Also got an 800 gallon per hour bilge pump. It pumps around water and then out the side right here. Now, what you can't see is underneath this panel is that other pump. And again, that is wired to this variable timer. And uh, when you wanna pump the live well water out, it'll pump it out that side. I know that has nothing to do with electronics, but while I'm showing you the workings of everything, why not explain that setup? I think the only thing left back here is that is the rear stern light just plugs in it's a pole light and uh the nav light up front very very similar deal can't remember if i showed that to you at the beginning of the video but if i didn't here she is same deal this and that back there those two lights are wired to one switch so you turn on the switch activates power to both because you're probably going to need both if you're out on the water at night so just wired into one switch to save switches um, I'm not big on using up switches for all these little individual things. So I normally do my front nav and my rear stern on one switch. Let's take a look at some of the connectors and some of the odds and ends I use to kind of put this thing together. All right, I busted some stuff out of the shop that I used in this build. So let's take a look at it. First and foremost is wiring. Um, this is a roll of 250 foot. It's 14 gauge duplex. As you can see, 10 copper so this is for marine use obviously it says right there marine grade so this is what i use in all my builds on a lot of the led lights and whatnot if you're just running one or two lights you don't necessarily need 14 when you start jumping a bunch of them together then obviously you want to beef up your wire but right now guys this in a nutshell this whole boat is 14 gauge except the lead from the trolling motor to the batteries that's six gauge and the lead from the battery to the fuse box um, negative bus bar those are eight gauge but um everything in this boat that's wired is this stuff get this on tinyboatnation.net shout out to those guys and uh let's go through some of this box of goodies so i took out the most important stuff that i used in this build anytime i'm connecting leads together 75 percent of the time i'm going to be using these solder connectors As you can see i've got two boxes of them got them on amazon you could use a uh, torch lighter heat gun, whatever you fancy. That's how I connect two wires together, make connectors. Now, if I'm not using those, then what I'm gonna use is some of these. Because I run a lot of the 14 gauge, I started buying those in bulk. So I'll just get them in, you know, the 100 packs. So um, beyond that, you know, the different terminal connectors. And as time goes on, I'll acquire more and more different sizes. You know, obviously we've got a six gauge, eight gauge. So uh, heat shrink, this is the good stuff. And again, I'll leave, I'll, I'll leave links to all, the, I do in all my videos, but I'll leave links to all this stuff down in the video description. You can check it out if you're interested in any of this, any of this stuff. I found a heat shrink tube that, that I use and I, I've got, as you can see, one, two, three boxes of, that's the old stuff, but it's got glue inside of it. So what'll happen is when you heat it up, the glue will actually squirt out the ends and you know you're getting a good bond. And uh, that's the stuff I've had success with and it's very reasonable priced. So leave links to that. And uh, I couldn't find my other terminals. They must be in the garage in another box, but ring terminal connectors. And um, that's what you're gonna use for all your leads going in to your fuse box. And I'll, I'll crimp them and connect them and then I'll run the heat shrink over them but they also make the terminals that are that are heat shrink terminal connectors so you know you could use those also and uh tools of the trade just a wire stripper got all your sizes on there this is what i use and this is actually kind of funny this this thing is this thing is i can't believe i'm building boats with this to be honest with you um i've had this thing for like 20 something years man somebody was working on my car when i was like in high school and left this in my car and uh back in the fast and furious days 
and I've just kind of had it ever since. And so this is what I use. Um, pretty funny. I need to upgrade. I, I know, you know, when you're building stuff like this, you got to have something better than that. But it's got character, and I've had it for a long time. But that's what I use all, for all my crimps. I'm going to wait for it to get dark, and uh, we're going to take a look at this thing when the sun sets. Got the boat from the garage. I've got these garage lights on just so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Of course, it's a summer night here in the state of Georgia. You could hear the bugs doing their thing. I took the liberty to go ahead and open up all the hatches, and um, I think we'll start with the blue lights inside the hatches sorry if this video quality isn't the best this camera doesn't do the greatest at night but this gives you an idea of how everything looks lit up at night everything inside the hatches very visible easy to uh, do whatever you need to do if uh, you need to get in somewhere at night. And um, that's what they're there for. Let's uh, check out the cockpit lights. Same deal here. Go ahead and do the nav light up front. The old red green. Legal Beagle. And then we will plug in ye old stripper, I mean ye old pole light. If I could get it in the hole. There it is. Booyah. Now that bad boy is bright. Got the graph turned on. Got your, uh, got your voltmeter. And then check this out, guys. I'll go ahead and do this. Go battery kill. Kills the power. And uh, back on. And I think that's going to be all she wrote for this John Boat to Bass Boat Electronics 101 video. This is a real solid setup. This is everything you would need as far as legality to be legal on the water and then have some good visibility being, being safe in the boat. Um, you know, this is a prime example, I think, of how to do a clean, simple, not over-the-top electronic setup and a John Boat build. Now, if you want to go over the top, then you could go ahead and wrap the deck in some LED lights all throughout, add some light bars or some light pods, maybe some underwater lighting off the transom. Look like one of them wakeboard boats I see out on Lanier. But as far as a simple, clean setup, I think this is it, Chief. Let me know what you guys think. This brigade-built boat is heading to Nashville, Tennessee, and I hope the owner really, really loves it. I enjoy building it, and I think it turned out awesome. Let me know what you guys think. If you're new to the channel, click subscribe if you like what you see. More builds to come. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.